very important point is made about, it almost appears to me that the internal auditor is the preventive guy. Um, the guy who prevents the infraction from happening. Um, <coughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm told that, and just a point that Dana Demola touched on about the need for restructuring. What's your own thinking around what you want to see in terms of restructuring the, the internal auditors and your function? Thank you. Um, when we were inaugurated, that is the new board, we are the fourth board. The previous board members actually made an effort to try and restructure it. They failed. And maybe our solution to uh, that is just change the board. Just change the board. But we were determined to make a fair attempt at restructuring because what was on the ground that we found was not good enough. What did you find? The major real block is this law which compromises the independence of the internal auditor. As was explained by Daniel, our internal auditors are actually employed by the MMDAs themselves directly. And as he further gave you the example he gave you in Boko, I mean, Boko is even, you know, a bigger a city. Nice place to be. <laughs> but they will tell you that, uh, you know, actually we have just opened a new office at uh, Zumalungu, somewhere, mm -hmm. which is a suburb of Boko and the rest of it. And uh, we're going to send you there. These internal auditors, let's, let's face it, are humans with responsibilities. The children are in school, and he's got to leave them and go to this remote area simply because he's brought out an issue that needs addressing. And then being so human, he will just give in and say, well, uh, I've, I've done my best but uh, there's not much I can do. And as a result, you don't have an internal audit process taking place. It's as simple as that. Because the report that will come in uh, is not worth the paper maybe that is written on because it's been couched in such a way as to, you know, sub suppress the, uh, the issues. Now, the attempt we have been trying to make, I mean, we started by thinking that, oh, there is the wish of Ghanaians, is the wish of even the leadership to ensure that we really protect the press by ensuring that there's this preventive measures being put in place, yeah. which is the internal audit. Mm. We said, okay, let's bring in the stakeholders. And the stakeholders being the local government, public service commission, and even uh, the external auditors and so on and we call it sensitizing them. When we started, <laughs> it, was, it became a war zone. It was more of protection of TEPs than really achieving a national objective. Because local government says, as a result of our decentralization policy, that is why we came up with this law which you know, and joins that we employ our internal just to serve us. They've lost sight of the whole concept. So we said, let's change it to consultation and so on because it was too much. Then we even wrote that, can you confirm your, your views? Because if we don't get their buy-ins, that is where we're going to be facing challenges mm. because uh, these are our stakeholders in it. It's become difficult as of today, we are still struggling. And it got to a point where we were saying how best we can work around it with the law in place. But honestly, it's going to be very difficult. So we are now pushing to have the law reviewed. Okay. At one point, I remember that even in Kumasi when I had to give a presentation to the Internal Audit uh, Association, it came up because uh, a higher government official in charge of the local government quoted the laws and so on and so forth. I was forced to indicate that 
I'm not looking at the laws. I'm looking at best practice. So if we examine it and we believe that the best practice overrides that of whatever law it is, the laws are not made to be stagnant. I don't think. Otherwise, we'll be going to the uh, old age you know, practices and so on. So if the law is in contravention of best practice, then we've got to change the law. Mm. And that is what we are pushing now to have the law change. And we are looking, and there are a lot of human resource issues. Mr. Wingful, um, when we did this um, event last week, there was some very instructive point that uh, the Ashanti Regional Minister made. He stood up and said, if you want the change, lead a change. In other words, he says, take the law. Don't wait for the politicians to, you know, and because as somebody had said, that is the finance ministry, et cetera, that must, you know, the government, in essence, must, must, must introduce a bill, right? Because they have to, it's their prerogative. But his point is, if you want that change, then you have to push. And he hasn't seen enough push for that change to happen, either at his own place, uh, at the Shanti Regional, um, you, know, ministry, uh, you know, regional office. He actually then says that, his internal auditor is here, that he's the one who goes to him when things come to him and say, calls him and says, you do, if you don't check this, I'm not going to approve it. He seemed to suggest that day that the problem is that the internal auditors themselves aren't proactive and there isn't enough coalition built yet to push this through and get the politicians who eventually have to push it to parliament to act. W what's your own take on that? Well, after examining uh, the processes in, within the government, you know, uh, operations, we realize that in the first place, we will have to initiate this change in law. Okay. We'll have to even lobby parliamentarians because they are going to. We don't want that law to be in parliament for 10 years. Yeah, don't he? Yeah. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's possible. Freedom of yeah. information. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we'll just be waiting because I can assure you that anytime you make a move and you are quoted this law and you say you can't do this and, and you don't want all these uh, obstructions in your way when you, 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 you are on full throttle, you believe that they should give you the support. And what amazes me is that if parliamentarians will be voting against such an initiative or such change in law, and they understand what is implied, then what sort of legislators have we got? Are they interested in the nation, or they are interested in you know, their constituencies only, or friends, or whatever it is? You know, so as uh, Daniel was saying, that if they think it's a tough war, then they are lost completely. Is there political? Because I know you started some work already. First, yes. maybe lay out what, what work has been done on this already and what are the next steps? Yes. We are now working with Ensign Young. It's being supported by EU. And the whole idea is that we said, whatever they brought, we've got to go back because we've got to have that independence because that is the only way. We can't work around it. Because if you want to work around, you say they are still employed, maybe you will send some people to go and take a second look at whatever is being done. That is purely repetition, and it's not productive. Mm. So what we want is that independence, and that's the initiative we are taking. That when it gets to the time, we are going to make sure that we initiate the change in the law itself. We'll have to lobby some of these parliamentarians. We'll have to educate some of them. We'll have to virtually let them realize the benefit to the nation so that we'll have the law passed and not have obstructions by interested parties or theft builders, but realize that what we are doing is in the interest of the nation.